So what I'm going to do is work using a edit poly again. I'm going to create a claymore or some basic sword. I'm just going to use a basic box again. Um, we can use a, a sphere as well. Matter of fact, much like we did the Gladius, we'll probably add a sphere later. Um, I don't want to start with a sphere because that'll give me a lot more polygons than I need uh, in the meantime. So let's go ahead and actually get our so let's uh, so in the past what I've done is throw in the edit poly modifier onto my object what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna convert it to an edible poly right off the bat and so now this is the actual base object I can't I can hit control Z but once I start kind of going forward this is where this object is gonna stay at um, and I don't really have a size here. I'm not even worried about the, the actual specifics. When it comes to a claymore, it's more about, again, the proportions. We can build an object in any software and then convert it and scale it as needed uh, later. So that's the one thing I love about this. Let's go ahead and rename this real quick. Let's call this claymore. All right, um, I haven't done a whole lot of research on this particular project on this particular moment. But let's go ahead and get some basics on this. I know that it's a sharp, long, heavy blade. It's a it's a heavy sword. It's built for basically chopping down things more so than it is about um, being absolutely accurate and pinpoint precision. So let's go into here real quick and just start kind of manipulating some things. So I go into Edit Poly and I hit four on my keyboard and that goes into my polygon mode. Um, let's go ahead and just kind of block out the basics. It's a heavy sword and a long sword, so it's going to have a pretty sizable handle. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to hit extrude. I'm going to leave this up, and I'm just going to go ahead and pop this up. Let's go ahead. Actually, let's do this. Let's make the uh, we'll put the guard right there. So I'm going to hit plus, and then we'll have the actual balance for the guard. I'm not sure there's what the name of that is, but we're just going to add that to add some more details. I'll hit plus again, and then I'm hit checkbox, and then this will actually be the blade. So what I'm seeing in my mind, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unlike the gladius, which I rotated 45 degrees, I'm actually just going to extrude this right here gonna hold the same values that we had in the last one so just go a little bit higher I'm eyeballing this more so than anything else let's go ahead and get back to our web page and let's look at Claymore a new image there's a perfect one right there like these are great super simple blade it has a little upswing on it sometimes not always and a lot of times it has these little um, this cross, this four-sided circle concept, like a four-leaf, five-leaf uh, five clover concept on the um, guard. But we don't have to have, we can have something like this. I think we'll just go ahead and use this one. So let's go ahead and save image as. Put it in a project. Call that thing for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this real quick. I'm going to hit copy. And what that will allow me to do is pull up the image in my map editor, or I can actually go into tools. Hold on a second. I'm looking in the wrong spot. I'm going to open up my uh, browser and go and paste it there. It's in my videos folder, but I'm so okay. I'm going to double click on it and go to the image viewer. And there is our reference. We'll have this thing floating around. I'm not going to be too particular uh, in terms of precision. I'm just looking at proportions right now. And so I can make the handle a little longer. Uh, one, two, three. It's about uh, four and a half handles tall. So I'll just go ahead and kind of have that idea. So we'll probably go ahead and make it four. What I can do is just, it's the same thing as using your thumb. Uh, when you're doing painting uh, from life, I'm just gonna hold shift and just eyeball that. It's a little bit right, okay? It's not perfect, but again, I'm not too worried about it. Now, of course, we're gonna have to add polygons to make this round 
Um, there's ways to do that for sure. Um, and we need to add some polygons on this side. What I want to do now is talk about uh, a really useful tool called symmetry. I'm going to grab these first and kind of extend this out a little bit and give me some working space. I'm on the top view. So it's a little fat on the blade and that's okay. I can actually take this and grab this face. I only have those two faces selected. I go to scale and I'm going to change this from being on the object to actually being on the selection. I'm going to scale that and so I can get the handle looking a little bit more proportioned. The blade may be a little hefty. Okay, and so the next tool I want to show you is called the symmetry tool. Um, we've got the blade more or less on the origin and it's centered. So we'll go into the modify panel and we're looking for SYMM. The symmetry tool is basically like a mirroring process and what it does is it actually throws a modifier on your object that allows you to mirror um, whatever is based on the center point of the actual gizmo. So the mirror gizmo Let's undo that and put that right there. So the mirror gizmo, what this will allow me to do is whatever I do on one side, it's going to put it on the other side. So I'll go here and I got to turn on show end result or turn on the test tube. You can see the actually change right there. So let me show you what the awesomeness of this symmetry tool allows us. So now I can actually move this in, in precision and with confidence knowing that I'm moving it in the right direction and I'm moving it equally on both sides. So I can set up a lot of the basic details and shapes real quickly using the symmetry tool. If I go ahead and hide by turning this little show in result, you'll see what's actually happening. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just leave it on there. And sometimes it'll just get kind of frustrating watching it happen. And so because you'll be you'll, you'll see the second side over here, which is not being symmetried, and that may get frustrating. So what I'll do at this point, this is where uh, modeling gets interesting. So keep up with this idea. If this gets confusing, just bring it up in class or just ask questions in the video. I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert, uh, convert it to an edible poly. That's going to collapse this entire stack down into a single edible poly base object, just like what we started with. The symmetry is gone. Oopsie. The symmetry is gone at this point. So if I actually grab this face again, second I did something okay so the symmetry is gone so if I go into the polygon mode and I start moving this one single polygon you'll see that it's not happening on the side the reason why I added that symmetry though is because it gave me this center line right here which I know is the center of mass and you'll see it's right pretty much where the it's really where the pivot point of the object is so I'm going to actually go in here and right click on the move tool and just zero out everything so I know that it's in the center of my scene. This is really helpful centering your object into your scene so that you can do a lot more, um, you can do a lot of useful uh, manipulations, transformations and use cool tools such as the mirror or the symmetry tool. You don't have to use it on the, on the actual center point but since that most software does require it or does utilize it like such as unity and unreal it's a good habit to get into and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete half of my model and just focus on the one that I'm working with what I can do though is put that symmetry back on I'm going to hit flip and this will flip the actual math the objects there by the way it's just face the mirror is just facing the wrong way so if I hit flip I'll get my object back so there's my, there's my object with my symmetry. If I go down into my edit poly, you'll see the symmetry is still on top. I can turn on show the uh, result. And now I have my symmetry back and I only have one half of that object. So that whole thing that was on this side, that cage that was demonstrating what was on the actual other side of my geometry is gone. And so now it's also not on my mind. And it's not going to help. It's not going to cause any confusion. And so what I can do from here is start kind of building up my shapes a little bit more effectively. Um, where are we at on time? This is going to get edited. 
All right, so we're at 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and stop at this point, and when we go done, when we go to the next video, I'll work on actually getting more shape on here and prepping for a handle, a pommel, and what we're gonna do where the blade and the guard meet up.